Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, this part of the internet is the tough neighborhood. Sometimes I come on here and I have real strident opinions. Sometimes they're unfair. I understand it. But note that my focus is really trying to beat the casino. And to do that, I'm going to have to make hard judgments. Some judgments are going to be harder than others. Some will be proven right. Some will be proven wrong. But we don't have the luxury when we're making a gambling play to be wishy-washy. Right? We have to mentally figure out who we like and why. Right? Because either on the play, whether it's a straight play, whether it's a hedge play, which I prefer, either the casino keeps most of your money or you get some of the casino's money. Right? It's binary. It's win or lose. So we have to make hard decisions here. Right? I'm not some corporate sponsor trying to play both sides of the fence. I'm trying to play one side of the fence, the fence that puts dollars in my pocket. Let's talk about this fight between Zab Judah and Paulie Malinaji. What I want you to do, at the risk of sounding a bit new age, is I want to think I want you to think about your four or five best friends, your crew. Right? The guys you like to run with. The guys you would want with you on a lost weekend in Las Vegas. Right? The guys you want with you at the pub on a good night. Right? Now, all I can say is this. Now, just imagine that those friends are with you in a car. And you're in the middle of nowhere. Someplace... None of you have been. And let's say that the GPS on the car goes out. Right? So, all of you are really lost. Now, all I can say is this. I think you know deep down that there are some of your friends who, no matter how talented, the guy could be summa cum laude. The guy could be Phi Beta Kappa. No matter what's on the guy's resume, there's some of your friends who you're not going to trust to figure out how to guide you back home. Right? The guy can, you know, look super organized, but you know that there's something about the guy that you don't trust as much as you trust perhaps another friend who may not be summa cum laude, who may not be Phi Beta Kappa, but who you know for whatever reason is the kind of guy who just already has the whole thing mapped out. He's the kind of guy who just has an intuitive feel for north, south, east, and west. Right? The guy could be drinking. This is the guy who, if there's a fire in the bar, or if there's smoke in the bar, and you're in the bar, you know this buddy is calm under fire. He's the guy people follow at moments like that. You understand this guy can come up with a plan quickly and can execute. Right? Simply put, under pressure, he's just more money than people who panic and get diverted. Right? Well, in this fight, and I know it's a hard assessment, but in this fight, and this is really for the Battle of Brooklyn, 
right? This is even a more tense personality matchup than Frotch Groves because there you have two generations. Here you have the same generation trying to be champion over the same piece of property, their borough, Brooklyn, in this fight. Because of my take on how the guys think, who's the guy who, whatever his skill set, already has it mapped out, right? Is calm under pressure, can get lost or surprised in the ring, and has the savvy to find his way home. If I had one bet to make in this fight, that bet would be on Pauli Malinaji to win the fight. I just feel that Malinaji is a guy who, quite frankly, doesn't need GPS. I think that in fights where Malinaji is surprised and the uh, strategy, you know, needs adjustment. And he needs to think on his feet while he's on the move. I think Malinaji is the guy I trust more in making those adjustments. Right now, Zab Judah hits harder than Malinaji. Zab Judah, quite frankly, in an age where we're all amazed that Shane Mosley buzz Floyd Mayweather, I'm here to tell you Zab Judah is the last man to knock down Floyd Mayweather. Second round of their fight. Floyd's glove hits the canvas. Folks, that's a knock down. That's not a Shane Mosley buzz job, and I'll agree. Mayweather is badly hurt when he's hit by Shane Mosley. But Zab Judah Mayweather actually has a glove touch the canvas. He's not only hurt, in my opinion, he's knocked down. Judah has some of the fastest hands in the sport. So what could possibly go wrong? Right? Hand speed, power, he's a southpaw. Malinaji's a jabber. So you would imagine a southpaw has a bit of an angles advantage on a jabber. Right? Well, what could go wrong is really the thought process. It's the strength under fire. As I said earlier, I don't care if Judah's a Phi Beta Kappa when it comes to hand speed. Right? I've seen Zad Judah get distracted in too many fights to believe that he's going to maximize his talents. Right? The Floyd Mayweather fight. He has Floyd's glove hit the canvas in the second round. Then he gets so distracted that later in the fight he starts to blatantly foul Floyd Mayweather. Then he's involved in an outright brawl in the biggest fight of his career. The Costa Zoo fight. Costa Zoo knocks him down. There's no question about it. Right? If you want to blame someone in that situation, blame yourself. Right? Because of course you've just been knocked down by Costa Zoo. Zab Judah gets up, falls back to the canvas. Referee Jay Nady calls off the fight, right? It's the second round. Then, of course, Zab Judah threatens the referee, right? Acts like he's going to punch the referee. I believe a person who knows the lay of the land a little bit better would understand that the real judges on whether the stoppage was premature are the fans, not the referee, right? Plus, how could you blame the referee when you physically hit the canvas twice, right? The ref has to make an assessment. Whether the ref rules in your favor or not, his ruling's not arbitrary. You've been on the canvas multiple times. In fact, many will tell you in boxing, if you're on the canvas and you get up and you fall back to the canvas, many refs will call off the fight at that moment, right? The Zad Judah Carlos Baldemir fight. He has a hand speed advantage on Baldemir. He has a power advantage on Baldemir, right? 
he moves better than Carlos Baldemir. Big fight, heavily advertised. Zab Judah comes out as flat as a pancake. Completely uninspired. The Joshua Clotty fight. Clotty has a passive defense. Clotty's like this. He needs for you to come to him. You're the faster fighter. You hit harder than Joshua Clotty. Zab Judah is there confused without GPS and he lets that fight stagnate. He lets Clotty win the fight. He doesn't do anything to get Clotty out of his shell. Worse yet, you knew Joshua Clotty was going to be in a shell because that's how Clotty fights. But yet Judah looked mentally unprepared for it. Now I believe Pauli Malinaji has an advantage in the feet department. Malinaji moves around the ring better than Zab Judah. Malinaji also is a thinking man's fighter. Judah Southpaw is either going to throw a right hook up top or he's going to come in with a straight left. Understand that Malinaji is going to come in and he's not only moving, he's leaning. Right? He's leaning back. I don't believe Malinaji is going to allow Zab Judah to land a lead right hook. Right? I believe Zab Judah is going to have a hard time landing the straight left hand. I think Malinaji is going to move around the ring, and then eventually I believe something's going to take over in this fight. Not just stamina, but mental stamina. Right? Malinaji physically has more stamina than Zab Judah. I know Judah went 12 rounds with Danny Garcia. I know Judah went 12 rounds with Lucas Matisse. Right? But he faded badly in the Matisse fight. In the Danny Garcia fight, he took off the early round, something he cannot afford to do against Paulie Malinaji. Right? Because you don't want to give Malinaji a mover a four round advantage. Right? But what's really going to doom Zad Judah to me is the fact that, in my opinion, in the eighth round, the ninth round, the 10th round, Paulie Malinaji is still going to be mentally focused. He's still going to be on his game. He's still going to be, in my opinion, banking those rounds. Right? Malinaji is extremely disciplined. He's like Juan Manuel Marquez. It doesn't matter what has happened in other parts of the fight. Malinaji knows the lay of the land, right? He's the friend you want behind the wheel when you're in the middle of nowhere and there's no GPS, right? Some friends just handle it better than others. Now, I know this video is going to be controversial. So be it. I'm just in this to make money and to figure out the winning play. And... The ability of someone to be a tactician, the mental discipline of somebody, those are the assessments we have to make here in trying to analyze a fight. And I just feel the fighter who has the better focus, the fighter who is going to stay on course and not get distracted by all the hoopla. New York City is a big city. These are two native sons, right? You can imagine the crowd is going to be, you know, involved and it's going to be emotionally heightened, right? The fighter who can keep his cool with all of that, in my opinion, is Pauli Malinaji, who also happens to move better than Judah, and who, quite frankly, is better defensively than Zab Judah. Let me make another point. You know, Pauli Malinaji, quite frankly, has one of the more underrated chins in boxing. 
I know he was on the canvas against Pablo Cano, right? Malinaji was showboating a bit too much. But understand, Malinaji fought an unbeaten Miguel Cotto, very big hitter. He went the distance with Cotto. Let's talk about the Ricky Hatton fight. He's fighting Hatton. If you look at the film, Malinaji's not close to being knocked out. Not close to being knocked out. Buddy McGirt, in his corner, inexplicably, stops the fight. Right? Officially, it's a stoppage. Obviously, you know, Ricky Hatton earned it because Malinaji's corner pulled the plug. Right? Malinaji only has himself in his corner to blame. But Malinaji was completely lucid. That fight should not have been stopped. As you look at Malinaji's record and you see that KO, just understand, he was in with Ricky Hatton. He was up on the ropes for much of that fight. And he was still lucid when the fight ended. Let's talk about the Amir Khan fight. <clears throat> that fight is stopped late. Right? Now, I'll agree, that fight could have been stopped. I'm not here to say that that fight you know, was stopped unjustifiably. It's a proper stoppage. But understand, it's more of an accumulation against an offensively gifted heavy puncher than it is anything else. And understand, to get that stoppage, Amir Khan, in one of his better performances, had to stay disciplined himself late in that fight. Right? Khan is still focused late in that fight. That's the exact time in fights when Zab Judah is unfocused. He was even unfocused in the later rounds against Floyd Mayweather. Right? And so, all I can say is, I know I'm going to sound hard here. Some people are going to say I'm biased. So be it. But I think Malinaji, quite frankly, is the more mentally focused fighter. If the GPS goes out in the vehicle I'm in and there's a discussion on what we do next, right? All of us have made hard assessments on our closest friends. The friend I'm going to listen to more at that moment would be Malinaji, not Zab Judah. And understand, I think the world of Zab Judah, I think he's an underappreciated fighter. But here I think he's picking the wrong opponent. And styles make fights, included in the style, is the ability of the guy as a tactician and making on-the-fly adjustments. Right? The hedge play I'm recommending in this is Malinaji to win the fight, hedged with Judah by KO. I think Judah only has a puncher's chance. Right? I think if this fight gets to the later rounds, Malinaji, who knows in his heart, in my opinion, that he should have won that Adrian Broner fight. As it was, it was a split decision. I'm just here to tell you I thought Malinaji gave away that fight. I think Malinaji's not going to make the same mistake here. I expect Malinaji to win. I'm going to hedge it with Judah by KO to cut my losses and to make a profit if Judah gets the lucky punch. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.